Rob Doster here. I got Jeff Goodman with me. Hell no. John Fink. Are we still live? Feel the 68 till I die. I'm sorry, man. I blacked out. Randolph Children. DJ Khaled. You know the big DJ Khaled guy? Hands grow up and in. Goodman needs to be fired all the time. Josh Tasker. You're going to beat people straight up. You know the deal. Drink responsibly tonight. I'll be drinking with you. Jarrell McNeil. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid majors. This is Feel the 68. After dark. Well, it's actually Field the 68 after lunch. Uh, I'm Jeff yeah. Goodman here with Terrence Oglesby, former Clemson guard, here with Matt McCall, former UMass uh, head coach, former Florida Gator manager, um, which I got to give you credit for there, you know. Nobody uh, – yeah, listen, I, mean, I, I don't know how many people was, know that, yeah. McCall. Not just a manager. I mean, I kind of had a, a, a multitude of roles there. Also, the head coach at Chattanooga. No, but Jeff, manager. I mean, I <laughs> hey, for what but it's manager, worth. Manager, that's it's on worth, your Jeff. resume. Hey, McCall yeah. took me on my visit when I went down to Florida. Wow. wow. McCall was my I host. I can't believe you got that. With my host. It had to be an unofficial. It had to be an yeah. unofficial. That's all it I was know. All right. it wasn't Let, let's get to it, boys. All right, listen, we're going to talk about a bunch of things. Now, Illinois is on the ropes right now at home, 37 seconds left, losing to Maryland right now in Champaign, which would be a uh, not a very good loss for Brad Underwood and the Illini. Uh, is North Carolina a Final Four contender? We're going to talk about that. UConn or Purdue for the number one team in the country right now. A Donovan Klingon update from Dan Hurley. Uh, which Cats, Kentucky or Arizona, are we most worried about? How many Mountain West teams will go dancing? We're also going to give our biggest surprise and biggest disappointment so far this season. But let's start with today's games. Not a lot of great action, but some action in the the Big Ten. Again, we're going to react live here to this Illinois game in a a bit. Uh, First, Michigan State with a win over Rutgers. Ho-hum. Except for the fact that Steven Izzo gets his first career points. An and one, and uh, Tom Izzo was uh, visibly excited. Um, his kid's been on the team. I think this is his fifth year as a walk-on and, and finally gets on the board his first career points. So that was kind of cool. But um, what was, to me, more telling than anything was Michigan State finally really shooting it well from three. They were 12 for 25 from three. That was obviously a sticking point earlier in the season. Listen, the Spartans aren't fully back yet, and I'm not sure they're ever going to be back to what we thought they were going to be preseason when some of us, um, myself, ranked them uh, top five. But here's my question to you, T.O. Can they do some damage in the NCAA tournament? They're going to get in. We know they're going to get in with Izzo. They get in every year. Uh, They have Tyson Walker, uh, uh, sort of a star, uh, Jay Nakins has been okay, and Malik Hall has been okay, and A.J. Hargard has been okay. Uh, now they've got Jackson Kohler back, uh, a big who can score. Do you have any faith that this team can actually do some damage in a couple months? You know what? What wins in the, in, in the NCAA tournament? Toughness, rebounding, and good guard play. And a whole guard hasn't been as good as what a lot of people thought. He And John Fanta loves to bring up the fact that he challenged the media – media day and then has not been great since then but I I think that first half you know we have our text thread or whatever that first half is like pulling teeth I mean it it might as well have been a root canal it was brutal to watch but the thing is is as they start to find their offense a little bit if they're able to hit shots completely changes the dynamic in which we can look at this team because we know that they have big physical dudes especially at the three four five it's a matter of are they able to hit enough shots and that's been their problem pretty much all year it, the wild thing to me, guys, is when you look at their metrics, when you look at their offense and their defense uh, on Kimpom, for example, they're both top 25 on both. Like, that's insane to me, considering their record's 10 and 7. If they go up and they get the right matchups, of course they can do damage because what they do well, and that's defend and be tough, that wins in the NCAA tournament. I think Tyson Walker needs to have big games. But, you know, outside of that, that's kind of where we're at. McCall, like, where's yeah, your mean, kind of – don't put your coaching hat on either. Listen, I don't want your coaching hat on today for this for this entire show. I want you to take that hat and throw it in the garbage and be one of us. Nice hat, All right, Be one of I us. I like your hat. Nice hat. All right, thank you. Nice I wear it for you. Nice I wear it for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, look, 
if you can make shots and you can defend, you're going to win games, and you're going to win games in March. Bottom line, they made shots tonight. Rutgers was it, – it was hard to watch. I mean, their offense was abysmal. And you expect more from Rutgers, you know, especially with everything they had coming back. And that was that, – that was we on our text thread, just, you know, looking at – it was like, man, like T.O. just alluded to this. It was, it was not a lot of fun to watch in the first half. I'm looking at Michigan State's schedule, and I'm saying, okay, this is a huge three weeks for them. And they took care of business today. They got Minnesota at home. They're at Maryland, at Wisconsin, Michigan at home, Maryland at home, at Minnesota. All right, so you're looking at that and you're like, okay, at Wisconsin is going to be a really difficult game because Wisconsin is clearly the second best team in the Big Ten right now. I don't think anybody would even argue that or even question that. So you got to win those other games just in terms of where they're going to be in Silver Tournament, making it 26 straight for Tom Izzo. But if they're going to shoot it like they did tonight, and I thought the other thing too, or this, this afternoon, I thought the other thing too was just the balance. It wasn't just Tyson Walker exploding. Yeah. You know, the other night when they lost, A.J. Hogar took 19 field goals. Tyson Walker took 17. I think the next closest guy may have taken seven. Like, to have balance on the offensive end of the floor is going to be key for them going forward. But if they can defend and they can make threes – Look, if you line up and play them in March, I mean, and you're on the opposing staff, like whatever their seed is, you want to call it the 8-9 game, wherever they get seeded. And, again, depending on the run that they go on, you're like, man, are we going to play Michigan State in this game? So I think they're a dangerous team. Tyson Walker, one of the best guards in the country. But they got to defend. They got to make threes. And, and, and this next, you know, really up until that game at home against Illinois – the only game they could really drop, in my opinion, and I'm again not hitting the panic button, is you know at Wisconsin. They got to win these other games, you know, because mm. Maryland not an NCAA tournament team, Minnesota on the bubble right now, um, and that, and that's it. And then Michigan not an NCAA tournament team. You can't drop bad games at this point in the year for them. Yeah, listen, I'm I'm kind of in the same spot with Michigan State. I think if they get the right matchups in the NCAA tournament. Could they win two and get to the sweet? Sure. I mean, the gap isn't that great, right? There aren't a lot of great teams that you put them up against and say, hey, if they make 50% of their threes, they're not going to have a chance to beat them. You know, Kohler's got to be able to give them something they haven't really had. And, and maybe they got to outscore some teams, you know, because he can score in the post. You can give him the ball in the post, and that will help some of those other guys because right now, Matty Sissoko can't really score in the post. We know that. Carson Cooper can't really give him a whole lot. Uh, Kohler gives him something different. And, and I think, again, Jay Nakins to me has been, as much as we, I don't want to say rip on Hogard, but we criticize Hogard for his his up and down season. Jay Nakins was a guy to me that had to step it up, and he just hasn't. He's been healthy this year. Last year he was hurt. Uh, he needed to be a, a consistent number two guy to Tyson Walker, and he has not been that And until he becomes that this year. I'm just not sure Michigan State's going to be anything more than, you know, maybe a one-and-done type team for the most part in the NCAA tournament. All right, Illinois just lost, guys. They just lost. And I said it when Terrence Shannon was suspended a couple weeks ago. I said, like, this Illinois team to me has zero chance, zero of winning the Big Ten tournament unless somehow they get Terrence Shannon back and get him back quickly. And all the Illini fans, including our own Trevor Valise, uh, made fun of me. They mocked me. They crucified me on Twitter. <laughs> and now what I'm doing is I'm laughing. People crucify you on Twitter? Mocking, that happens? Yes. People I'm disagree with you, Trevor Jeff? Back. Occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> um, all right, listen. Illinois, give them credit. They did well over the last couple of weeks without Shannon, right? They beat Northwestern. They hung with Purdue. They beat Michigan State at home. They get another home game here against a Maryland team that has been among the most disappointing in the entire country. And what do they do? They piss down their pants. That's what they did today. They did. There's no other way to say it other than the fact that they absolutely let one get away here that they should have at home in Champaign at State Farm that they had to have. Because we know if they're not going to be without Terrence Shannon for an extended period of time, which it looks like could be the case. You know, I'm not playing legal expert here like Rob Doster tries to. 
Uh, but what I am saying is we don't know right now, and I think you've got to prepare if you're Brad Underwood as if you're not having Terrence Shannon back again this entire season. If you get him back, that's great. It changes everything. But as a coach, McCall, don't you have to just kind of prepare as if, hey, listen, we're, we're not going to have him. We're going to change our offense. And if we get him back, we'll, we'll revert back, and he'll be our guy, and hopefully we can pick up where we, where we left off a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, this is – this is one of those situations too where you got to just move on you know and prepare without them you you don't have another choice um and you got it, it's got to be just two separate things th th this is something that's completely out of our hands terrence is, has to deal with this he has to let this legal process play out he's not with our team we're moving forward completely without this is not an injury Right. This is not someone that's rehabbing and you see over there running up and down the sidelines trying to get back because they're coming off an ankle injury or a knee injury. This is this is a completely different situation. So, yeah, you you have to prepare like he, he's not coming back. And this is our team and this is our team going forward. Can they win the Big Ten regular season? No. The only thing I, I may disagree with you, Jeff, is just in terms of the Big Ten tournament, because you don't know what's their seed. Can they get hot? Can they make a bunch of threes? I mean, at the end of the day, that was the issue today, going six for 22 from the three-point line. But flip it on the other side. Like, this is what we've been wanting from Maryland. This is what we were expecting going into the season. Jameer Young, 28. Julian Reese, 20. I mean, it's a one-two punch, backcourt, frontcourt. This is what we've been wanting. And we just haven't gotten it yet from Maryland. And then they go on the road and they win a game like today. And, you know, Illinois dealing with all the stuff that they're dealing with and Terrence Shannon. That it, it is a distraction because they're still having to answer and talk about it and do all those types of things. They're looking at us like, hey, man, we're going to be okay in this game. This is Maryland. They're not that good. They're having a down year. Oh, wait, by the way, they have one of the best guards in Jameer Young who still got it in him. His team just hasn't performed to the level that we all thought they were going to perform, and they did today. So, man, credit Coach Willard, credit Maryland. But, yeah, that, I, I think Illinois, they got th – these are two separate things. This is injury that a player's coming back from. This is something way bigger than that, and they got to move on without him. Yeah, they could have used him today. Is there yeah, a chance – is there a chance that we look at Illinois in, in – a month, month and a half without Terrence Shannon if they don't get him back, and this is a bubble team. Like, is that out of the question here? I think that's a bit, bit strong just because I think they're going to be able to win enough games. And I think Coleman Hawkins, he's going to show up, you know, what, 75% of the time, just conservatively speaking. And he, those games where he's really good, he's really good. I thought he got bullied today. Uh, Reese, by the way. Maryland fans, I, I realize that it's been up and down, and you 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 feel as if uh, this team's underperformed, and to an extent they have. But James Reese has worked his nuts off. He looks so much better than he did just a year ago. He's gotten bigger. He was stronger. I thought he dominated the paint today. Uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. not having him, um, what Damask ended up with what twenty something, and then it was pretty much it. There wasn't really he had twenty six, and then. Uh, good had 13. That was it. Like you got to have more production out of Quincy Gary, who's shown he can score. He can't go to for 10 at home in league. Like now that Terrence Shannon is gone, he's going to have to be your third guy, maybe even fourth guy. And he's got to give you something and because he has that capability to do it. I just worry a little bit uh, moving forward. Are you going to have some of these guys that are inconsistent? They can't all be, have a bad night at the same time. And I think that's what happened uh, past the mask and good. Yeah, good. It was terrible. Well, I mean, listen, offense, the mass was really offense good in tonight. the Big Ten yep. by and large is just it's it's rough to watch sometimes. And when you it's take away, it, it is like, rough. I, look, it, my teams at UMass could always score. Okay, that was never the problem. We always scored points. If we had defended it a little bit better, I'd probably not be sitting here talking to you guys in this seat. So when I have to watch bad offense, I really really scratch my head. That's I, rough. I can't turn it off because my job, I got to tune in. But, man, I can't stand bad offense. It drives me nuts. It's brutal. And, and when you here's, take away arguably college basketball's, like, one of his one of the best isolation scorers in, in that game, yes. like, yeah. that is massive. And not only that, those other guys relied on him to make a couple of shots because their nights just became so much easier. Damask has it in him. But when you have two of those guys on the floor, it completely changes things because you have to focus so much attention on stopping two guys – 
that those other guys could have big nights. And Coleman Hawkins is he's skilled, but what's the right word? A bit spacey. I think he's a bit spacey. So but like Jeff, you're not going to be able to get him you know consistently. What they are? Go ahead, Michael. Jeff. Wouldn't you Go agree ahead. though? This is what we've been waiting from Maryland. I mean, Julian Reese, he could have. Yeah, left but it's too late. Stayed, coaching change. But it's, too, Young, it's like, too late. 48 points between them. I don't know if it's too late. Right. I, I and mean, that's, it's too late. I mean, if, I mean if, okay, if fine. Fine. Bit of if you run off. off. Yeah. You know, I mean, those two guys, that one two punch today was, that's what we were wanting. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's what, what they want. should have been doing. That's what they should have been doing all year. And again, I, I, I think. Listen, for Illinois, you're playing against an Illinois team that, frankly, they've been able to kind of keep their heads above water here, which is super impressive over the last couple of weeks. But eventually, you know, it catches up with you. You know, the the, the water falls. And and yeah. I think with, with this Illinois team, Terrence Shannon was the second best player in the country, arguably, yes. before yes. his suspension. Yes. They were that yes. reliant on him. So, obviously, it was going to make a huge difference Losing a guy that could go get one whenever he wanted was an absolute uh, bucket in transition. Could get, you know, he, he just was going downhill at a, and shooting it deep like I'd never seen him shoot it before. So, again, I think, yes, Illinois is probably going to make the tournament. Maybe they're an 8-9 seed. And you know what? If they don't have Terrence Shannon, that number one is looking at it and saying, thank goodness. Give me Illinois in the second round because without Terrence Shannon, to be honest, if you look at him in totality without him, I think they're gonna be they're gonna be playing like a fringe, like a ten seed, like a fringe tournament team at the end of the day because they just don't have enough. They've got still Ty Rogers has played better, but I don't trust him as a high end point guard. And now you lost your dude who could just go get one, uh, get a bucket whenever you, you want it. Well, All right, Neil Khan went. Yeah. Yeah, and this is not like a situation where you can like rally around. Hey, you lost a guy who went down for an injury, or see, this is not that's not that, right? This is this is complete. This is a completely different scenario. So I'm with you. So 100. percent Yeah. For what it's worth, All too. Right, so I said James. I said James Reese. I meant Julian Reese. I got Jamie. Ky I just in yeah, my head. Yeah. Jamie. Ky my bad. For those Maryland fans, are going to come Sorry, on back here in a minute. Kaiser, yeah. Reese. Are you they going to be in your DMs? Are they going to be? In They're going to be in my DMs. Trust me. They 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 have been there quick. It's unreal. It'd be in mine. If, if I screw up a name, trust me, I'm going to hear it. I yeah. spelled Donovan Klingon wrong on, on the, the, the tweet, oh, yeah. the, the pre-show tweet. I got killed on that within three seconds. All right, speaking of the Huskies, big win. No, not really. Not really a big win. Uh, they beat Georgetown today. Uh, a crappy, crappy Georgetown team. It's going to take time <laughs> for Ed Cooley to rebuild them. Well, they are. They're not good. Yeah. Listen, they're not, they're good. not good. Um, period. You know, like, I, I think Cooley will get them good. It's just going to take a little bit longer than I think any of us thought. Because I think he – a lot of us thought he could flip it quickly like Patino did at St. John's, right? Flip the roster, bring in a good amount of talent, coach them up, and have them where they're an NCAA tournament team or close to it. Well, they're they're probably not going to be an NIT team. Uh, UConn wins without the big boy again. Donovan mcclingan has been out for the last couple of weeks with that foot injury in the loss to, to Seton Hall on December 20th. He warmed up today. That's the good news for UConn. That's the good news. He warmed up before the game, and Dan Hurley said after the game, we're, we're on uh, Kling Kong watch this week, meaning he may come back. Kling you know, maybe Creighton, Creighton on Wednesday at home, maybe Saturday at Nova, but he's getting close, and that's huge because here's the difference with this UConn team now when he comes back. Alex Caravan shooting the hell out of it now. Remember, like early in the season, he was hurt with a finger injury. Couldn't make a shot from three. Now, Caravan and Spencer cannot miss. These dudes are elite-level shooters. Tristan Newton's not shooting it that well, but he's doing everything else. Right, he rebounds right. his position, gets everybody else the ball where they need to, understated in how he does it. No, oh, by the way, Steph Castle, they're, they're talented freshman, who again gives, gives him something different, an athletic wing. He scored in double figures the last four games. So when Kling Kong comes back, and if he's healthy with that, that foot, which, again, is a big if right now. We don't know. He's been dealing with these foot injuries here, it seems like, for the last three, four months. Uh, I think UConn puts himself right with Purdue as 1A and 1B. Uh, how much faith do you have in this UConn team, McCall, and how concerned are you 
about Klingon and whether or not he's going to deal with these issues the last couple months of the year. He looked pretty good. I mean, the, the clips on uh, on the TV today when he was warming up out there, I mean, he was moving, he was moving well. I think it's just super impressive to see what they've been able to do without him in the lineup. I, I really do. And, you know, beating St. John's, DePaul, Butler, Xavier, Georgetown, Cray, I mean, it's just – it's super impressive to see what they've been able to do without him. And now you're going to add him back into the mix. Now that throws – from a coaching standpoint, and Coach Hurley knows this, a different dynamic because roles are going to be different because he's going to be out there. And, you know, guys that are maybe playing significant minutes right now, their minutes may decrease when he comes back in, but you need him back out there. But it's just super impressive to see that they, they've they just kept it rolling. They kept it rolling. And I know we talk about UConn a lot, but I don't know if we talk about him enough in terms of just we, – we get so, you know, all up in arms when – you know, Purdue drops a game to Nebraska. Or, oh, my gosh, Houston loses the other night. They're the number two team in the country. Oh, you know, Kansas goes and, you know, loses at UCF. I can't believe that happened. This is unbelievable. And then what happens? Without Donovan Klingon, UConn winning games, winning games, winning games. Just kind of status quo. So, um, look, they shot it ridiculously tonight. Um I thought Coach Hurley was definitely going to get teed up at the end of the first half when they called a foul on Garrett. I was like, how did he not get teed up? Especially because I think he was pretty – It's, it's kind of amazing. It's, but he sat down and he kind of grabbed his amazing? chair. Isn't amazing? As a coach, if you sit down and you're screaming but you're grabbing your chair, maybe I should have done that more and I would have got teed up less. Like just sit down and grab your chair and don't flail your arms because he wasn't doing – he just sat down and then he leaned up against the scores table and crossed his arms like that. But, uh, again, just super impressive. Well, that's what the Hurleys do. I don't know if you've watched Bobby. I don't know if you've watched Bobby, but when they get close to refs now, they put their arms behind their back. And I wonder if, like, that's a dad thing, if if, if Big Bob told them or, or what happened. But now, both of them, if you look at Bobby and he gets, you know, all like, like he throws his arms behind his back just to make sure. I mean, maybe the refs, that's okay, you know. Um, maybe you're allowed to just sit down and scream and yell, but. Impressive what they've done without the big fella. The big fella's coming back. And, I'm I, Jeff, I'm with you. 1A, 1B, Purdue, and UConn right now. I think that they've been the most two consistent teams in the country by far. It's always good when you have two yep. guys combined for 11 of 15 from the three. Like, that certainly helps. And if anybody t- tries to convince me that Alex Caravan's not the illegitimate child of Mr. Bean, I would argue with you because he looks <laughs> like Mr. Bean. I don't want to hear any nonsense. It's unbelievable. It's uncanny. Uh, another thing is you throw in um, – I think Samson Johnson has really benefited from he, – he's gotten some elongated minutes. Obviously, Supreme Cook's a handful. He was the only guy that really played well for Georgetown today. Jaden Epps just couldn't throw it in the ocean. Uh, and he got into a little bit of foul trouble, but Samson Johnson's benefited from these elongated opportunities, and I think uh, that's eventually going to pay off. Uh, he's been he's been good. He was great against St. John's a few games ago. It's just one of those things where uh, that next opportunity, and on top of that, they're still managing to win these games. It's just routine for them, uh, and you know, for all of what Danny Hurley is and how theatrical he is, and uh, you know, his movements and how crazy he gets towards the referees, the sucker can coach. He Ooh. is putting those guys in unbelievable spots. Uh, and it's he's just fiddling around with the rest of the Big East at times. I mean, I know they've lost one game in the league, but my God, it, like Hurley does an incredible job on top of all those theatrics. And his staff really puts together some elite game plans, elite game plans. I don't think Klingon needs to come back and be the Donovan Klingon we thought he needed to be. I don't think he needs to play 30 minutes now. And I don't no. think he should play 30 minutes now. I don't think he will. You know, Samson Johnson gives him a different look, right? Like, here's what I love about this UConn team, and I've said this all year since I saw him in the preseason. And they're different than Purdue this way. First of all, they're bigger, they're stronger. They, they look like men. Where Purdue's guys, a lot of them just don't look like Fletcher Lord. Just, I mean, he's 170 pounds, whatever it is. You know, Caravan, Cam Spencer, shoot the hell out of it. We know that. Um, Newton's a veteran. Castle gives him something completely different that those other guys don't give him, right? That athletic, big, strong defender. Like Lance Jones is a really good defender and he's older, but like Castle's big and athletic yeah. and 
just different than Lance Jones. Like, I just love how the pieces were put together for UConn, especially if Klingon can give you, honestly, give you 20, 22 minutes when it matters down the stretch. If I was, honestly, Danny Hurley, I might put him on like a little bit of a pitch count for the next month or two. Even yeah. if he looks healthy, even if his foot looks healthy, why? Why chance it and play him 30 minutes in any game the rest of the year? Because to me, for him and for your team, right, for him to protect him, because you you want to send him to the NBA after this year. With all yep. these foot issues this season, you want to get him to the NBA, get him drafted in the first round, hopefully, and say, hey, listen, we did we did the right thing for you. Yep. Yeah, and what game other, did he get injured was, again? What, what game did he get injured? I'm trying to remember. It, it was the uh, it's Seton, Hall, Hall. Seton Hall game. The so so game. that was the last game they lost, and then they've still been able to reel yeah. off what five in a row. And it hasn't been the yep. top. It hasn't been the top of the Big East. But all, all of that being said, like for them to be able to battle through those things and still continue to win, uh, it's 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 really impressive. And and I would hold him back a little bit. Because you, let's be honest, like Samson Johnson can compete in that league, and, and he's shown that he can. Sometimes he gets out muscled. Today he got out muscled. Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for Supreme Cook because I think he's limited from a skill perspective. But the dude attacks the glass, and he's just a junkyard dog. Well, he's he's going to be able. Yeah. He's going to be able to play in some of these mid-level European countries next year. Like he'll end up in like a Finland or a Belgium or something like that, just playing hard and boarding. Uh, it's it's uh, UConn's good, man, and. You talked about Purdue. It's like Purdue has one huge dude, and they have a bunch of guys that are a little, depending on which spot, a little undersized. UConn's big across the board. Like when they go out to warm up, you want to talk about layup line all stars? Like it's different. It's different. They can switch. They're big. Even Cam Spencer, like he looks, he's a big cat now. 6'3, what, 210? He's wide. He's strong. He's built. Yeah. He's built. Yeah. And they he's can build like a man. so much. They can even switch with those guys. Like, it's a, it's a, they're a tough, tough, tough matchup, especially their size around the court, not just in the post. Like, and then you add Klingon back into the mix to compete with the Zach Eady. He's only two inches shorter than Zach Eady. Like, I, you play him head to head, I might go. That'd be a fun well. matchup. It'd be well, a well, great. That'd be a of, fun matchup. The other piece of it too is, is you know, in terms of him getting a hundred percent healthy, you look at the schedule at the end of February, beginning of March, three out of five on the road. Their road games are at Creighton, at Marquette, and at Providence. So what's the goal? To be playing your best basketball at the end of February going into March. So the goal is to have him 100% because those are three difficult road games that, who knows, the regular season title could come down to those last five games of the regular season, three of those on the road for them. So yeah, there's no need to rush it, especially with how well they're playing right now. You know, and look, he's an NBA player. He's going to get his opportunity to do that. It's not like you got to look at his numbers and say, oh, he's got to go out here and get, you know, 30 and 20. Like, no, you just got to get him back out there and playing and playing at a high level. So you're playing your best basketball come March. Yeah, you're right. Hey, McCall, the the, the idea that you got to put up big statistical numbers to be drafted high is crazy. Like Nuts. you have to fit a certain thing and then it, it, like a fit a certain profile. And then everything's going to take care of itself. You don't have to go out. He could average 10 and six the rest of the year and still be a first round pick because his fluidity level and how he runs, he, he moves, he jumps. Like, yeah. yeah, he's just like, he doesn't have to put up monster numbers. And if you can conserve him and big men and feet, man, it's, it's really tough. Big men and feet. If you can conserve uh, his feet for the rest of the year, do best by what's for him, do best by him. Like, that's kind of where I would air. And you know that you can win with Samson Johnson in the lineup consistently. That I think if nothing else, you learned that over the past five games. thousand percent. All right. Next up on After Dark Lunchtime Edition, I tell you why I'm worried about these guys. FAU next. As you guys know by now, we've partnered with BetMGM this season. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 each and every week of the college basketball season. We have a special offer that will be available starting on Tuesday, January 9th, and running through Monday, February 12th, the morning after Super Bowl 58. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, in honor of the big game, 
you can use the bonus code FIELD158 and you'll get $158 in free bets on your first wager with BetMGM, regardless of whether or not you win that first bet. Here's how you make it work. Download the BetMGM app. Sign up using the bonus code FIELD158. Deposit at least $5 and place your first wager on any game. You'll receive $158 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your bet. Just make sure that you use that bonus code FIELD158 when you sign up. And remember, BetMGM is now available under one wallet in select states. As a New Jersey resident, this is super convenient when I have to go cover games in New York or Philly, which happens quite a bit. When you cross state borders, you just log into your existing account and fire away. You don't have to create separate accounts in each state. It's easy, it's simple, it's clean. And most importantly, we have some fun stuff coming up for the heart of the college basketball season. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops, odd boosts, and my favorite, a nice juicy parlay boost. So download the BetMGM app and sign up today. Field 158. All right, welcome back after dark, lunchtime edition. Uh, we are sponsored by BetMGM, and I'm joined by Terrence Oglesby, Matt McCall, and uh, I'm wearing the hat for McCall. FAU with a big win today. Well, I don't know if it was a big win because UAB has not been great this year, but it was a win and, and not a close win, so that was kind of rare for this. Hey, Jeff, Owls how come every time you say something – hey, Jeff, Jeff. How time every time you yeah. say something yeah. nice about a team, you got to throw a caveat in. Every time there's something nice, it's there's a caveat. Like a good win by FAU, UAB kind of sucks, but but, but, you know, but. <laughs> what, what do you there's want me to fun. say? They haven't been great. I try to I try to be real with with, with I mean, ten and right, six, listen. two and yep. one, pretty good. I love listen. I love FAU. I think everybody knows. Other than you, McCall, I'm probably the vice president of the FAU fan club. I, I want to get down to Boca. If they're good, I get down to Boca. All right. I see you. I get a little bit of a tan. I see my boys, Nelly and, and Elijah Martin and, and Vlad Golden and Dusty. You bring your worst uh, t-shirt. I love this. I do. You bring your, I do. That's you bring right. your worst you, t-shirt. Why right? did you bring that shirt on you have right now? It's a nice shirt you got on right now. You didn't bring that down to South Florida. Thank you. I'm going out for dinner. I'm, I'm going out okay. for dinner right after the show. That's why. That's why I'm all dressed up. Uh, all right, so this this FAU team has been baffling, okay? Uh, they lose to Bryant. That was months ago, earlier in the season at home. Uh, one of the most uh, baffling losses of the entire year. Uh, the, the loss to Illinois, Jimmy V, no, no shame, obviously. Florida Gulf Coast, confusing because FGCU has been bad this year. Then they lose at Charlotte in a game they probably should have won on the road. And they're, they're winning games close. Like Tulane, they got away with one. Elijah Martin gets yeah. fouled. They end up uh, winning yes. with free throws. This is kind of the first one in a while that, that you've been able to kind of exhale for the most part uh, against UAB and, and say, all right, here's my question to you, McCall. I'm going to start with you. Like, talk me off the ledge here because right now I just don't trust this team because of their inconsistency uh, on both ends of the court. They're not shooting it well. Other than Nellie Davis – He's the only one that I trust right now that's going to be able to put up 20, 30 points and save these guys. Yeah, and he's been outstanding. And, I mean, I think he scored the first 10 points of the game tonight. Um, you know, Elijah Martin has struggled. And, you know, at times when you you were out there and you watch him play, you know, he was so explosive last year. Like, you watch him in the NCAA tournament, he went by everybody. There was nobody that could keep Elijah Martin in front of him. So my point to that is I think sometimes expectations, I don't think, I know expectations in sports are one of the hardest things to deal with. That's why, you know, when you see these teams, these professional teams, these college teams, Florida that goes back to back, you know, these, you know, the Patriot, whatever these dynasties, it, it's hard to do. And when you have all these expectations, sometimes, man, th th those things can be paralyzing. And it seems at times Elijah's out there just in quicksand and not nearly as explosive. Can he get back to the level he was? No question about it. He's just got to cut it loose and go play. And I think for FAU, look, I mean, you're talking about a, a program that has never seen that level of success, not even close to that level of success. So now they have created these expectations. And it's a lot to deal with, especially at a program that's never done it before, like ever in the history of school. So, 
you never worry about them really. You know, I know, I know they lost to Brian at home, but Jeff, you were at the game. I mean, those guys, even when Liberty may have gotten a little bit close or Charleston, like they're playing at home. That place is packed. You don't worry about them in those types of games. You worry about them where they've struggled this year, especially as on the road when maybe the team that they're playing against across the front of their chest is, hey, we're going to be okay. If they're going on the road to play in Memphis, I guarantee you they play to the level that they're capable of playing. Guaranteed, 1,000%. They go on the road, play Charlotte, it's like, oh, we're going to be okay. We'll be able to turn that switch on. And it's not that Dusty doesn't know that. He knows that. He's trying to address those things. But those expectations sometimes – can be a very, very challenging thing to deal with. And I think that's what you're seeing with Elijah Martin. Great player, unbelievable person. You've spent enough time with him to know that. But, man, that, that, that's hard. Now, now it's kind of like, okay, what, what's next for me? I was on draft boards. I tested the waters. I came back. And I'm not performing to the level that I'm capable. Now, he did go out and grab, what, eight rebounds tonight? So there's he's impacting the game in other ways. So you can't that, – that's why he's still out there. I mean, it's not like he's – Dusty's not but they got to play off each other better. They got to play yeah. off each other better, McCall. They don't I do agree. that well. Those two should, with all they've played uh, alongside each other now for the year plus of being the the, the two men, you know, top two guys. They got to learn to make life easier for one another, Tio. Yeah, I, I think so. I, and I also there's something to be said for like the expectations. It's almost like, hey, let's just hurry up and get to the tournament. Because when you bring yeah. everybody back, you've already you've done this whole thing. Like I remember, didn't I, I want to say in the the second run of the Florida teams that won the national championship back to back, Al Horford and that, that crew, they hit a bit of a run at the end of the season where they lost three out of four, yes. or four out of five. I can't remember yes. exactly what it is, but it, it's almost yes. like God just goes to four. the tournament. Vanderbilt, Tennessee. I, I can tell you exactly yeah. South Carolina. I can tell you exactly what it was. Yeah, it was teams. Did they like, get bored, McCall? Did they get? I think did that team just get I think bored. There's a point to that. There's a point to that getting bored thing. Like you're coming back from Christmas yeah. against Florida Gulf Coast. They're at Florida. Like it's a it's a like God. This is a boring game. And then you let a team that's at home with all these expectations kind of get some confidence in the first ten minutes, and it can snowball. I think there's a big thing to be said with Florida Atlanta. Like, like just get to the freaking tournament. Can we just get there already and give it another shot? Yep. Because I think. Sometimes when you've seen success and a lot That's of those guys point. come back the following season, you can get it, it can almost turn into a monotonous season. Like it's like, God, it's the same thing yeah. every day, every day, every day. And we know no matter what we do during the regular season, it's not going to matter as long as we if we don't make a long tournament run. So, Such yeah, I, that's kind of my thing. Like, like there's always going to be a run. Because yes. they said, listen, point. they said all the right things in the preseason. And it's easy to say yeah. him, right? Like yeah. Dusty's such a good coach. He's so smart. You know, he he's he's giving him the right message, just like Billy Donovan probably did to, you know, Noah Horford, all those guys. But but again, saying it is different than living it and getting up for Charlotte and Florida Gulf Coast instead of like you said, McCall, just flipping the switch and thinking, all right, you know what? We're gonna turn it on here second half. Right. Well, and Jeff, too, like go go back, and I'm not – the only reason I'm referencing it is because I was there. But, like, the 06, 06, 07 national championship teams. Had Joe Kim Noah left in 2006, he's the number one pick in the draft, or none. It, it really wasn't even close. He comes back to school, and in 2007, there were some ups and downs because of all the stuff that he was having to deal with. I'm not saying Elijah Martin is dealing – with the level of stuff that Joe Kim Noah did, but there's still a lot of sure. stuff that he's dealing with. And Joe Kim had to manage that, and that was tough. And then the following year, yes, he's still a lottery pick, but he was number nine because that was that was difficult. And Elijah Martin's having to manage that. And he's a different personality than ne Nellie Davis. And guys internalize things and handle things differently, and he's going through that. And I think that's another big key. Now, to Tio, I mean, that, that, that Tio's point is that's spot on. Perfect. Let's just get to the spot tournament. Yeah. We'll be fine. Yeah. We'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. Memphis, um, they hung 112 on Wichita State today. 112 <laughs> after barely, barely beating UT San Antonio uh, the other day. Okay. So I, I think Memphis might be getting bored a little bit as well. Uh, but today they didn't get bored offensively. 
they can score the ball. They got a lot of weapons. They're old. They added Naquan Tomlin a couple of weeks ago. I mean, this is a talented, talented, experienced team uh, that I give Penny a lot of credit for, and I give uh, Slick Rick Stansbury a lot of credit for because you yeah. know, he 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 hit the portal hard. I mean, he, without Slick Rick, you're not having Quinterly, David Jones, and Naquan Tomlin right now in Memphis. You're just not. Hey, now, NIL hey. helps, but but Slick Rick can – nobody's better. As I've said, and I've said it plenty, like nobody – Nobody's scarier than Slick Rick on the recruiting trail. Nobody. Nobody. Games change, though. Hey, as of right now, as of right now, today, and I can't – I saw Jimmy Dykes, he said this the other day, and I can't find a hole in the argument. Is, is Penny Hardaway National Coach of the Year at this point? Yes. Two I don't losses. know if he's quite – he's up there. He's in the equation. There's a bunch on. Look, Bruce Pearl's done uh, an incredible job. Mark Pope. Uh, you look at Danny Sprinkle at Utah State. There's a bunch of candidates, I always say, as of today, right? Like mm -hmm. you always have to, got to have the caveat, as of today, because things can change and do change so well, they, quickly between January 15th and February 1st, and then February 15th, and obviously the end of the year. But all right, here's my question. Okay, but, but six no, guys in double give figures, it. like not only did Slick Rick get a bunch of older dudes, but they're sharing the basketball yeah. and they're playing together. You put up 112 points. You got six guys in double figures. The ball's popping. And then Caleb Mills goes down with an injury. You lose uh, the kid that transferred in from Louisiana Tech. Help me out. You, or Louisiana Lafayette. I can't remember which one it was. Doesn't Jordan matter. Brown. Jordan Brown. Yeah, Jordan Brown. He leaves middle of the season. You add Naquan Tomlin. He fits in seamlessly. Like, it's, it's a good team. And a lot of it, a lot of it was with new pieces. David Jones has been a hell of an ad. He wasn't an under, he was an under the radar guy. Where did he come from? DePaul last year? Like everybody's like, well, he can score. He went to St. John's before that. Like, what's his deal? Like, and he has been an awesome ad. At this point in the season, Penny Hardaway's got my vote for national coach of the year. Listen, he's in the mix. Somebody he's definitely in the mix. And and David Jones has been, you know, first team all American good. Yeah. Um, again, the, the Daquan Tomlin ad was huge, huge, and a little bit of a gift for, for Memphis there at that time of the season. Uh, here's my take to you, McCall. All right, gun to your head. I know you're Mr. FAU. I know you live down there. You're going to have to go by FAU and Boca here soon. Who are you taking, Memphis or FAU to win the league? Oh, man. Uh, based on today, as of right now, get gun to my head, I'm taking Memphis based on what they did today. 112 yeah. points, uh, six guys in double figures. They scored 112 points and shot six free throws. <laughs> Think about that. They shot six free throws. That's it. They scored 112. Um, you know, I just with what FAU's done, too, just in terms of some of the games that they've lost, you know, I mean, Memphis, they're deep, they're talented. You know, it, it's hard for me to, to pick them. Um, but I, I think at this point in the year, until Nick Boyd, Elijah Martin, all those guys are playing to their capability. You know, Giancarlo Rosado got hurt today too. Okay, Trey Carroll had to come in the game. That, that's a big piece. Rosado, you know, Vlad Golden's out of the game. He's the guy that goes in there, and they don't miss a beat. He got hurt. Don't know how serious that injury is, but he was on the end of the bench for the whole second half, I think, of the game. So that's another big piece to that team. Because Trey Carroll is a talented offensive player. He just doesn't impact the game defensively like Rosado does. So I think as of right now, you got to give the nod to Memphis. And I'm not saying that because I want to please John Martin. That's not why I'm doing this. Okay. We don't ever want to please John Martin. You know the deal, but you got to give them the nod right now. <laughs> All right. You when we come back deal. here on After Dark, After Lunch Edition, we're going to tell you. Who's going to get more NCAA tournament bids? TOs, ACC, or the Mountain West? I'll give you a hint. It ain't going to be TOs, ACC. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Before we get back to the show, I need to let you all know about the Field of 68 Daily, an all encompassing college basketball newsletter that arrives in your inbox, you guessed it, daily. For less than a dollar a week, you'll wake up every morning to more than 1,500 words detailing everything that you need to know to stay up to date on the world of college basketball. From the notable mid-major upsets 
to the stars that are out injured, to the breakout performances that only our team of college basketball junkies watched. The Daily is edited and produced by Mike Miller, who spent more than two decades running NBC's digital written content and is subscribed by more than half of the Division One coaching staffs, the biggest names in college basketball media, and the agents that work as power brokers in the sport. For just $50 for the year, you get access to the same information that the insiders get. And before we get you back to your regularly scheduled Field of 68 content, let me tell you guys about the Field of 68 merch store. Head over to fieldof68.shop for officially branded Field of 68 apparel. Whether you're supporting your favorite team in the student section or from the couch, there is no better way to gear up than the latest from the Field of 68. The best thing I can say about our merch is the quality of the product. Anyone that has ever worn a t-shirt knows how frustrating it is when the neck gets all stretched out and the bottom of the shirt starts looking like the bottom of bell-bottom jeans. And there's nothing worse than a hoodie that loses its snugness that makes it such a perfect way to stay warm during the cold winter weather. Whether you're shopping for yourself or for the college basketball fan in your life, everything you need is at the Field of 68.shop. Jeff Jeff Goodman struggling hey, with back. his microphone, hey. but we'll get we'll get we'll get him moving here in a second. We're going to talk a little bit about who. Uh, let's be honest, who was going to make the NCAA tournament? More teams, Mountain West Conference or the ACC. And right now, just for reference, Mike DeCourcy of Fox Sports has five from the Mountain West, five from the ACC. Uh, if you're going to look at all these different teams, as far as Kim Palm is concerned, Mountain West that league this year. And actually, to be honest with you, uh, McCall, I, I'm more of a Mountain West guy right now than I am an ACC guy because I spent a lot of time out there in the Rockies. That is high level. You're going to go on a run out there too. You're gonna, I'm going you're on gonna a run. I'm heading. To, I'm heading to Albuquerque tomorrow, so I'm excited about that. That's going to be a good game. Uh, Utah State at the Pit. My first time at the Pit. I'm fired up. But McCall, let me ask you this. I'm going to take over for Jeff as soon as we get him going. Uh, if you look at these two leagues, and I understand people, you know, the Mountain West hasn't had a ton of success in the NCAA tournament. I feel like this could be the year, though, where they have two or three teams win in the first round. I mean, Colorado State is ranked, and they're one and two in the league. Like, think yeah. about it, like that. That that's how good the league is. They're ranked, and they're one and two. I was more upset that the league made Colorado State and New Mexico play you know, the first game of conference play. I'm like, how, how are you going to, you know, pair that together? And I'm sitting there thinking, well, are they the two best teams in the league? Like, maybe not. Utah State, San Diego State, Boise. I mean, it's it, it is it's fun to watch, and I don't think we're giving the league enough credit. I think as of right now, you got to think about it, you know, they may get more teams in the ACC. I'm shocked that as of right now, too, the Big Ten has seven in. That 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 uh, that, that surprises. Well, they because listen, I'm, they don't have seven in yet, guys. They don't have seven in, but they, they got a bunch of you know. Listen, there's not there's not that one league other than the Big Twelve that's that's kind of dominant right now, which is going to be good for a team a, a league like the Mountain West. I mean, you look at it and you say, you know, again, you've got six teams right now in the top forty five of the net and the top fifty of Ken Palm. Right. I mean, Utah State's been and we'll get to biggest surprise here in a minute. Uh, they've been about as big a surprise as, as there is in the country because Danny Sprinkle brought back zero points that, that scored last year from from Utah State. Now, he brought a couple dudes with him from Montana State, but Colorado State's been a big surprise uh, with the win against Creighton. That was huge. Right. San Diego State. Yeah, haven't been quite as good as people thought. Uh, but again, they still got some some good wins. They went to Spokane, won there. They beat St. Mary's. Uh, New Mexico is healthy now. They got their guards back. Like, that's the key with them. They might have the highest upside of, of anybody. I, the, the two teams that I think are going to fight for one spot at the end of the day, I think those four are going to be in. And I think between Nevada and Boise, they might fight for one. And I think at the end of the day, uh, the Mountain West ends up getting uh, five in. All right, Vaulted, guys, is an app that allows you to participate in daily cash prize pools without an entry fee. It's the place you can store your own predictions forever by using the Vaulted Challenge feature. You can prove you're smarter than your friends. 
Go download the Vaulted app. It's spelled V-L-T-E-D to challenge your friends, store your predictions, join daily cash prize pools without an entry fee. All right, I went in and I filled out a Vaulted here. And I am going with San Diego State to win the league. And that may be a little bit surprising right now. Because, again, Utah State, Colorado State, they have better numbers. Uh, I just think the culture and what they did a year ago and what they've done in this league consistently over the last 10, 15 years is enough for me to feel better uh, about San Diego State and the Aztecs. Uh, Who are you guys taking? I'll start with you, McCall. Who are you taking to win the Mountain West right now? I, I got the Aztecs. Yeah. Um, first of all, are you not allowed to wear an FAU hat in Charleston out to dinner? Is that why you had to go change your hat? I'm just, just curious. Yeah, I changed it. I changed it. Pat Greenville Kelsey Braves. out there. And Greenville Braves. He's going to be like, is that with you when you go to dinner? Kelsey's going to be mad at you? Okay. Um, you know what? I, I Listening to Richard Patino last night with you guys, um, just in terms of his team, Jalen House, and I'm not saying this because he's a good buddy of mine, but he said something interesting because they got off to such a great start last year. And he addressed it when he was talking about it, like yes. avoiding what happened last year in the kind of, you know, not finishing the season strong, not making the NCAA tournament. So, you know, him putting that out there and, you know, he's addressing it with his team, I think super positive. So, you know, I was on here with Doster and I caught a bunch of flack because I don't think people that listen to the show really – paid attention in terms of we had to pick a team to make the final four outside of the top 25. Uh, And I had talked to Richard that day. So that's why it was on my mind and they were playing really well. And now they're healthy with Jalen house back and Mashburn. So I'm going to take the Lobos. And again, because I tune into the field of 68, I'm not just a part of it. I listened to it. Um, I thought that was a good point. And he's definitely addressed that with his team that, Hey, we got off to a good start last year. We're not going down this same path. Yeah. And I think that's that's why I'm going to give them the nod. Donovan Dent's been good for him, too. And even with some of the injuries, like he's taken a significant step forward. That was a guy that was highly recruited and ends up going to New Mexico. Uh, got to throw got to throw some uh, some some love out to Leon Rice of Boise State, who after a bad start have won nine out of their last ten. They're going to be – they're tough to match up with any time because Dagan Hart, and what able he, whenever he's able to score inside and out of the perimeter, uh, Max Rice finally starting to get some steam a little bit, and they're starting to win games. But if I had to pick one outside of San Diego State, I would lean towards New Mexico too because guard play. I love guard play, and those two guys can score. And it, when I Jamal Mashburn Jr. is a mid-range maestro. Doesn't shoot a great ball from three, but, man, if he gets to 15 feet, you can forget it. It's two points. Uh, Jalen House is a lightning rod. He's fun to watch. Uh, and Nelly Jr. Joseph provides some rim protection for that team. He's an athletic dude. I, I would have to pick New Mexico, too. And then Utah State. I, I just – the only hesitation I have on Utah State is, like, who have they really played? You know, they, they did beat Colorado State at home in league. Outside of that, uh, there wasn't a whole lot in the non-conference, guys. A loss – uh, at Bradley, and then I guess the best win after that would be UC Irvine or San Francisco maybe. I, I just – during the non-conference, they didn't play anybody. And I'm not going to say their 16-1 and one starts a falsehood because it's not. I, I just I, – I wonder who could make a deep run in the tournament. I, I, I would side with New Mexico because of that guard play. All right, let's get on to our biggest surprises this season. It's a good kind of segue from Utah State because – they have to be in the equation no matter – again, I, I agree. The resume is not loaded. But mm-hmm. it, when you look at what Danny Sprinkle uh, inherited when he got uh, there, it, what he's done is nothing short of amazing this year. And really then you throw in what he did at Montana State last year, which is a really tough job. Uh, mm-hmm. This is a dude who, who honestly, like high, high major programs, have to have him on their radar right now and, and look at what he's done. All right. I would say for me – I'm going to go with BYU and Mark Pope here. I'm going to go with BYU, um, another team in Utah, because I think a lot of people thought after last season they were going to be a doormat this year. They were not going to be relevant at all going into the Big 12. And I know it's early in the Big 12 still, but even the win at UCF over the weekend was a huge one. I mean, UCF had all the confidence in the world, right? They they had just beaten Kansas – like. 
they had everything. And, and I think that was a huge win for BYU because the adversity hits and you don't know how they're going to respond. They had done well early with no expectations. Now they started to have those expectations. And, and again, you lose to Cincy. Um, but I, I thought, again, to me, BYU would be number one for me uh, in the country from a good, a positive perspective. Tio, you want to go? What do you got? Yeah, you, you know what? There's Obviously, there's so much movement. I, I think Grant McCaslin and what he's done at Texas Tech, everybody knew that the guy could coach. Uh, the fact that he's got them going in such a positive direction. Last three games, wins over Texas, Oklahoma State, and Kansas State. And we know he can coach. They're tough. They play hard. His guys have always done that, even back to where he was at North Texas last year. He, he evaluates talent. He gets the right guys in. And I, I think what they've got going in Lubbock – I, I'm going to be honest. I expected them to be good sooner rather than later. I didn't think they would be good in year one because, one, the league is a bear. Uh, two, it, sometimes it takes a second for a new guy to to imprint or put his imprint on, a, or on the school with his system. That's what usually takes a while. Hadn't taken him very well. So biggest surprise so far for me, Texas Tech and whatever, everything he's been able to do. McCall? I'm going with the Dayton Flyers. Uh, what Anthony Grant has been able to do this year, they've only got two losses. Um, they lost at Northwestern, which seems everybody loses at Northwestern. Then they lose to Houston on a neutral floor. They haven't lost, I think, since November 17th. So you're looking at almost two months. And, oh, by the way, they're doing it without Malachi Smith, who, when fully healthy like he was his freshman year, is one of the best guards in the Atlantic 10. I think what Anthony's done this year at Dayton, especially coming off last season, I mean, expectations at Dayton are through the roof. And when you walk in that building, it is packed every single game. I don't care if they're playing, you know, Providence, UMass, anybody in the Atlantic, it doesn't matter. Kentucky, Carolina, or, you know, a Division II school down the street, it's packed. And expectations are through the roof. And they lose their starting point guard, and Dayton has gone on a run here and haven't lost – since November 17th on a neutral to Houston. So I think that's a surprise for me. Credit Anthony, uh, one of the best human beings in all of college yeah. athletics. I think Jeff, you and T.O. would both agree with that. Does things the right way about all the right things, treats people the right way. Yeah. And I, I don't see yeah. really anybody in the Atlantic 10 right now catching them. And it's super impressive. Two mm -hmm. losses at Northwestern, Houston on a neutral. Really impressive what Dayton and Anthony Grant are doing right now. All right, we got to go to the negative. The biggest surprises uh, on the other end, and I know McCall is squirming right now that he has to participate <laughs> in this endeavor. Uh, I'm going to start in the must bus. Uh, ah. Right now it's effectively broke, broken down. I mean, it's yeah. broken. It's on the side of the road somewhere uh, about 30 minutes from Fayetteville just trying to get back, and nobody's coming. Like, must is called AAA. They won't answer his, his phone call <laughs> right now. He's just sitting there waiting, and the bus is broken down. The driver has left. Uh, no, like, listen, they, they've been – what Muss has done the last couple of years is, is remarkable, getting this program back uh, to relevance, to national relevance, after, honestly, Mike Anderson did a ho-hum job with them. Uh, but this year, it's been a disaster. The Nets, 113 right now. Uh, they're They're – I mean, their numbers stink. They can't win games. They're getting blown out. I mean, they lose by 32, the worst loss in Bud Walton history uh, recently against Auburn home. I mean, come on. Like, they're too talented for this. They got Tremont Mark. They got Trevin Brazil. They got players. They just got Menifield eligible. There, there's no reason for this other than, guys, uh, there's got to be some chemistry issues. So, Arkansas, for me, is clear cut the most disappointing team. T.O., I'll give you – I'm going to buy McCall a, a minute here to collect his thoughts before we go to him. He's an overly positive guy. I like that. I, I, I'm going to stay in the SEC. Uh, Mizzou, Be, after going 25-10 and 10 last Ooh. year, you were able to see a lot from Dennis Gates. And they brought a lot of their players back, especially in the backcourt. Uh, I expected them to kind of pick up where they left off. They overperformed last year. Uh, and with expectations coming in – uh, what was it? They won a game in the NCAA tournament last season. You kind of expected them to get like keep that train moving. They've lost six out of their last seven. 
and they just haven't gotten the same amount of production that they've had in the past. I think that loss to Kansas kind of did them in because then it snowballed. They played Seton Hall at home at a semi home. It might as well have been a home game. And then they struggled there. And then you run into Illinois. Uh, you got to get going in conference play. And uh, you know what? The SEC's got a couple of teams that are good, like that aren't usually good. I feel like Georgia's pretty good. I feel like South Carolina's pretty good. Uh, those are games last season that Mizzou handled. Uh, this year, with the, with a lot of the same guys, they haven't been as good. All right. The time has come, Matthew McCall. Uh, you have to say something negative about somebody. Who are you picking? Uh, well, up until yesterday, I would have stuck with you guys in terms of the SEC, and I would have taken Texas A&M. I mean, when Texas A&M went into Ohio State with Wade Taylor early on in the season and what they did to win that game, I'm like, okay, this team is for real. This team is going to compete for an SEC championship. They're really good. But then they knocked off Kentucky yesterday, so i got to pivot out of the SEC. And I'm not going to pinpoint one team, and I'm not going to just not pinpoint one team because uh, I'm a positive. Oh, here uh, we go. Here no, we go. no, no, you're not going to leave. This is gross. Hear this me out. Gross. Come on. Hear me out. Step Hear it up. Out. Don't be soft. The biggest Come disappointment on. is the Pac-12. It's the Pac-12. I was on my flight last night coming back from studio. No, and no, I we're not allowing this. No. Hey, 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 and I are not allowing to go with a league that is going out of business. McCall, no, no, McCall, you can't take a league that's going out of business. McCall, just can say UCLA down, and be done with it. LA in terms right. of college hoops with UCLA and USC. Can I take those two? Can I take both of yeah, those two? Take two? This yeah, is the last year of the league. Yes. I'm taking both of them. It's disappointing. Bronny is, is supposed to be a pro. Unrealistic expectations in terms of him. He starts last night, plays 30 minutes. He doesn't even score a field goal, but – his dad thinks he can start for the Lakers, so I'll, I'll put USC and UCLA. Last year, the Pac-12, I'm, I'm watching that game last night on the flight. I was like – I turned it off and, and started watching the Dark Knight Rises on JetBlue because I couldn't watch that bad of basketball anymore. It's the last year of the Pac-12. It's the last year. Can we get some exciting games? You had a football team play for the national championship, and your basketball league is terrible right now. Step up your level of play, please. That's all I'll say. How about Matt McCall finishing the show by slandering LeBron for his comments and the fact that, yes, you're right, Bronny, by the way, since he made the comments that Bronny could play in the Lakers easily, Bronny has not made a field goal. So, LeBron, just slow your roll a little bit because, honestly, it's too much pressure you put on your kid. All right, listen, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, After Dark, lunchtime edition. Hey. I'm Jeff Goodman, Terrence one more Oglesby thing. for Matt McCall. Uh, T.O.'s got one more. T.O., what do you got? Hey, what do you got? I love how we didn't want to be too negative. So I got to pick one. You picked one. And then McCall, just because he's the most negative out of us three, pick, gets to pick two. I like that. Two. Two. How about because that? We I'm don't so pick the whole league. I'm so positive. He still, right, he, I, I'm, he I'm still so goes positive. with two. All right. There you have it. Goodman, T.O., McCall. Tomorrow night, regularly scheduled night. 11 o'clock Eastern. I think it's Doster, Hansborough, 